Check this out. Those are bigs, dude. What is going on my homies? I, I got something kind of fun for you. If you guys remember back, Jacob Wheeler absolutely smashed them at the MLF BPT event on Lake Gunnersville. And we, we did a video on it. So he was basically fishing his new bait. It's a, it's a fluke style or a straight tail spunk shad style bait on a, on a medium light head. Not super light, not super heavy. And using this shaking technique, a lot like a Nico rig, to basically draw out these suspended fish. And I gotta throw a shout out to my buddy Jacob Wall. He actually told me what it's called. It's a Japanese technique called mid strolling. And, and what it does is it combines a Domiki rig style presentation with the tight lining technique of a Kaitech. Two of my like favorite things to do. I love throwing a Kaitech and tight lining. So I was actually doing this quite a bit and I didn't even know it. So what I want to do, we've been talking a lot about like the hover hook, we've been talking about forward facing sonar, we've been talking about different things to catch suspended fish. What we're gonna do in this video is I'm gonna show you exactly what mid strolling is, how to do it, and how to rig it up and what your best bait picks are. So hit that like and subscribe button. Let's mid stroll. One of the coolest things about this deal is you can probably already do it. So Bass Mafia box loaded with a bunch of finesse jig heads. Um, if you guys throw a high tech already you already have the components pretty much to do this you might need to play around with baits a little bit there's definitely some components that that are a little more specifically made for this for example the new jig head from gambler with the ridges you like the ridges it's seriously it gives a killer return on forward facing but what you're going to need components wise is you're going to need a ball head jig um, just like your, your standard Kitex, how heavy of a ball head, how heavy of a jig head do you want? You, uh, if you were you like usually throw in like a Kitex, say, in a quarter ounce, so I'll throw a Kitex in a quarter ounce in like, I don't know, eight to anywhere down to like 20 feet or so. Obviously there's exceptions for fish and spotted bass in the winter and that. So I'd throw that quarter ounce. Usually you want to take like one, like half step down from there. So in general, anywhere from like 10 down to about 20 feet, I will throw an eighth of an ounce, so a little bit lighter, um, but exactly the same jig head. So an eighth of an ounce is what I'd recommend. I would definitely not go up to a three eighths because you're basically killing the concept of this because the whole idea behind this mid strolling is to get down, but to get down slow and stay above the fish without putting that much action on the bait. Grab some baits. Um, there's a wide range of baits, a lot like the hover hook concept. You're, you're gonna focus on your straight tail, shad, minnow, your, your sort of your your live sort of I don't know your fish style baits right so this is the new minnow it's a four inch gambler um, the FFS minnow uh, but it you know you can use whatever you like I like something that's a little thinner and, and easier to get down but has a good shaking appendage so a spunk shad the FFS shad you see how it has just that straight tail basically what you're trying to do is get a presentation that you can sort of shake in place that hovers much like the hover hook has a little bit different presentation but that you can keep above those fish and shake and that tail is going to impart most of the action almost just like a little minnow just sitting there swimming not knowing what to do because like four giant bass are staring at it if you know how to rig a Kitech you already know how to do this it's super straightforward so I got a ball head right here um, that's that eighth ounce and then I grabbed an FFS this is the shad the three inch um, threaded on biggest thing to be careful of is try to be as straight as possible it's not always easy with these small baits but thread it on Get it so that you're about to kind of push up on that keeper that should be it right about there um you're gonna have at least if you're using a screw lock and this you don't necessarily have to use a screw lock um like the the gambler one has this the wire form keeper on there uh so you can use elastic in that i like the screw lock because as we're going to talk about in a second one of my retrieves with this is to basically burn it for like two cranks and then kill it but we'll talk about that in a second um, in this instance then you're just gonna basically screw it on um, it just helps to keep the bait in place and then especially if you get into a group of fish which I did today um, it, it's you can get right back in there you're not like trying to 
you know, slide the bait up every time. You don't have a foul bait. So we didn't do too bad of a job. You can always tell how, how straight it is. You can adjust it a little bit, um, but that's your presentation right there. You can see that tail just, it, it's just, it's a shaky little deal. So let's talk about how to fish it and what you need to fish it on. All right, gentlemen. So what we got on the bottom here, it doesn't look like much, but using my side skin, I, ident I identified like a, basically a hard spot and then I, I noticed some fish kind of laying on the bottom. What's crazy about these kind of fish is that they're very hard to see on forward facing, but what's going to happen is, see, there's one that popped up there. I'm going to slang this little kind of um, strolling, mid strolling kind of rig out and you can see it's going down, down, down. And what's going to happen is, is these guys are all going to see how they're coming up. They're going to come up and hopefully eat my bait. <laughs> Do you see them all? See how they all rose off the bottom? And there she is. It's so crazy. It, they're they're not suspended fish, but they're they're on the bottom. The only thing they'll eat though is a bait that's above them, like it's something like a little shad bait. This is that that um that new gambler minnow, um just on a little eighth ounce ball head. Freaking craziness, dude. First off, you're gonna need a spinning rod. You can use your Kitek rod, 100%. So I get a little medium action spinning rod. Um, I have eight pound fluorocarbon. Line is very important. Six or eight pound test. I know some of the Japanese guys use four pound. I can't bring myself to do it. But six or eight, you have to stay light because this, this presentation is a lot about the fall and sort of the natural fluidity of the bait. The heavier line that you're using, the less it's gonna be natural, the less it's gonna fall naturally and the less bites you're gonna get. You're kind of killing the concept that you're you're originally coming to the table with if you're using too heavy fluorocarbon line. So on the back of here, I have 12 pound braid. I have super expensive braid on here. This is made by Cast Baits. It's like a unbelievably just multi-strand. There's a bunch of strands in it. It's limp like extremely limp. And the reason I have that is this is not the easiest uh, rig to cast. It's very light. It does not give you much leverage, even on a medium light rod. Um, so the, the limpest, you know, least memory braid that you have, and I'd highly recommend using 12 pound. If you're used to, you know, using 15 or something up there, go down to 12 or go down to 10. It will make it a lot, a lot easier to cast. The whole key with this technique is the fish can be just about anywhere. They can be up in the water column. They can be down on the bottom the only trick is they're eating up they're not willing to react to something that's down on the bottom so you slang it out there you're gonna get it down you can follow it down with your forward-facing sonar once you get it to the depth that you're interested in usually especially if there's a small group of fish you're gonna see a bunch of fish rise up to the bait that's a great sign the more fish that are coming to the bait the more likely you are to get bit it's a lot like that glide bait presentation you want them to compete and if there's a bunch of them in there all it takes is one to kind of nose dart at it and somebody's gonna close the deal they're gonna smack it so if they don't eat it on that initial fall you want to keep a semi taut line this is where that tight lining comes in this is where it kind of fuses with a Domeki rig and a mid strolling because basically you could pitch out a Domeki rig hold it and you know shake it and boom catch them you know that's that's Domeki fishing basically however this mid strolling aspect is basically you're going to tight line kind of like you do with the Kai Tech. you're gonna put a little tightness a little tautness on that line and that baits actually gonna pendulum so less shakes are better in my personal experience but every once in a while you can kind of just shake your rod tip you don't want to shake the whole rod that's way too much action you might just shake that rod tip here and there just to kind of give the bait a little bit of a pop but the general presentation is is that straight tail bait acting a lot like a Kai Tech and penduluming down through the fish and your bite is usually going to come on that initial fall when you fall down near the fish or as you fall through the fish or over them and they're going to come up off the bottom or they're going to rise up to the bait and smack it it seems super simple it's a lot harder to do than it sounds and and the other thing too is like any forward-facing presentation it, you're going to not catch 
all the fish that you see. You're gonna have a lot of fish that are gonna react to the bait and just maybe like come over, interact with the bait, but not close the deal. Just look at all of those though as informational pieces. These are all fish that are telling you, you know, maybe I need to keep it a little higher above them. Maybe I need to shake it a little bit more. But the general gist is mid strolling is basically Kitek fishing without a tail and putting a few pops in it from here, you know, from time to time. It, it's super cool, it works, especially if you have these fish that are just not reacting to baits on the bottom it is a suspended fish or fish looking up technique it's crazy how trendy but at the same time functional and working it is we have a lot of suspended fish that we're going after and this is just another way to catch them along with that hover hook along with that kitek along with that glide bait and it's a lot of fun to get that bite you usually see it on the forward facing or they just load up on that rod that's why you want to use like a seven foot seven foot two medium rod it's really an impact you know when they actually get it because they just pull it dude they, they'll grab it and snatch it and go dude it's it's an intense bite but it's very integral you know you have to have your components tight and you have to be very subtle about that presentation hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys got anything to add or any other sneaky like suspended bass techniques drop them down in the comments box and definitely if you get a second go either jump on um, jacob wheeler's youtube channel or jump on that mlf live um, from gunnersville for the bpt you can even watch my buddy jacob wall on there but watch jacob wheeler um he, he's doing the technique it's the technique in action and obviously he's doing it right because he's catching some mega bass tight lines homies we will see you later <laughs>